First of all, let me tell you something about OPEC and the IEA. So we have no problem whatsoever with the OPEC. Well, policy. sir, the language has been uh, extraordinary. Not from our side. Uh, there are two different views, I would say. First of all, about the, uh, this year, oil demand growth. Uh, the, uh, our colleagues from OPEC expect two times higher, more than two million barrels per day of, uh, of oil demand growth. We expect a bit uh, less. We will see who is right, who is wrong. The second one is about the uh, clean energy, the future of uh, uh, fossil fuels and the climate change. So these are the two uh, views. Everybody has his or her own views. We respect them. Uh, coming back to the, uh, the role of uh, the OPEC uh, plus countries, uh, this year's markets, I think uh, even if they continue with current uh, cut uh, rates uh, they have, I would expect, unless we see a major escalation in the uh, Middle East, uh, oil markets will continue uh, to be uh, comfortable. On that vein, Dr. Bira, let me ask you what's changed this year versus last year because we've had COP28 in the meantime. Right. If you consider the mood on the mountain, most are still somewhat concerned, but not about monetary policy now, around the geopolitics instead. Yeah. So as you look at what's changed in 12 months, what progress has been made when it comes to energy transition? Yeah. So uh, I would say at least there are uh, two important uh, points that I want to mention. The one on the political side, the second one on the markets. On the political side, I would... Uh, uh, really celebrate uh, what came out uh, from COP28, the, co the conclusions there. The more than 200 countries, governments, signed off for the new destination of the world energy system. Tripling of the renewables, energy efficiency growth, methane uh, reduction, and most importantly, more than 200 countries signed off that the world needs to move away from fossil fuels. Yeah. We've only got a couple of moments left, but I, I didn't care about that declaration so much. I thought it was a lot of headlining. But what I really cared about is the fact that the oil companies were there making substantial declarations on methane, uh, on oil and gas decarbonisation strategies. Well, I think it was under the hood that I cared about rather than the big headlines. So, so you, care, you believe in the oil companies rather than the governments, 200 governments, of course. Uh, uh, we I will see in real action rather than yes, protestations. I completely agree, definitely. And what we are going to do at the IEA, we are going to track all the progress in all these areas uh, on a momentary basis and share the results, who said uh, what and who did uh, what, and share with the, with the public. But one thing we shouldn't forget, the second point about uh, in the last 12 years, we have seen, for example, renewables increased in 2023 by a a big growth of 50 percent, five zero percent, big growth from one year to another, and this is not coming from is one meeting from uh, Europe or U.S. mainly. It is coming from China, India, uh, Brazil, of course from U.S. and uh, Europe as well. There is a very strong, unstoppable uh, growth of uh, clean energy, renewables, electric cars, heat pumps, and uh, and others. When it comes to the COP28, is that I really wouldn't. Uh, uh, underestimate this, uh, that the, uh, more than 200 countries signed off that they are going to transition away from fossil fuels. We will ask them, everybody will ask them, you signed this and you are doing that. Uh, how come? Yeah.